Hey, welcome back, YouTubers. This is Daniel Strong with Excel VBA is Fun. This is lesson two in our worksheet events series. We're going to talk about the worksheet change, and uh, not to be confused with the selection change event. The worksheet change event is a little different. Instead of me clicking somewhere, the worksheet change event only happens when you change one cell from one value to another. For example, if I had a number in here and I deleted it, or if I had nothing in here and I typed something in and, and hit tab or enter or clicked away as soon as I left that cell then that cell had officially changed so it may run so our objectives today we're gonna run a macro we're gonna get the total of quantity times price over here in the totals for the selected row when the price is typed in so we're gonna do that by doing one, another one of those if not intersect is nothing codes and we'll go over that really quickly so we will make a macro put my name in there we'll say quantity is one price is three total is going to be well that's yet to be seen I'm going to do control shift dollar sign to make the price become in fact we'll do that to column D as well control shift dollar sign all right, now we're ready to get started. Alt F11 for our first objective. Now I'm gonna I'm in the same worksheet here. Or excuse me, I need to go to the uh, sheet six, which is the change worksheet. Okay, click on worksheet. We do not want selection change. I'm just gonna click on the one I do want, which is the change event. And now you see it's brought that up. Let's delete this other one. We want the worksheet change event. Okay, here we go. We're going to start by saying if not, and, and if you want to know more about this if not intersect business, uh, please watch the previous video. If not, the intersection of the target cell, comma, and we're going to say the range of, let's just do looks like we're going to need it the price so we're going to need C6 through let's just do C6 through C1000 that ought to cover it won't it in parentheses for the intersection is nothing then and we'll run our macro from there end if okay so let's see what happens so if uh, if we are making a change on anything of C6 through C1000 it will run this macro currently we don't have anything in there let's say if that's true let's see we need to get the totals so we're gonna say we're gonna say the cells this is gonna use target dot row we need to know the row that we're in currently target dot row comma and we want total, so one, two, three, four, column four equals, and we need to get the quantity times the price. So we're going to say equals cells. We need the row again, comma, column two times cells target dot row comma three all right so what we're saying is that the fourth column of that row which is right here is equal to the second column of that row times the third column of that row so this should work let's go ahead and do a change here now as I hit delete on the price it'll probably run the macro and put zero in there but you notice it's not a formula it actually has the value zero there pretty cool I'm gonna hit 450 and hit enter a one times 450 now you notice if I do that here nothing happens okay it's only whenever I use C6 through C1000 so we'll just say 120.33 and that's our total.
This is hard coded. This is again. This is not a formula that says equals sum or equals this times this. Whereas if somebody types over it accidentally or deletes it or something, as long as I select this and hit enter, it's going to rewrite it. That's the power of Visual Basic. Uh, you can't write over the formulas and screw things up once you've hard coded it. All right, objective number two, really quickly, same as number one, except the name must start with a P or an M. That's exciting. We're going to use the left function in Visual Basic. Currently, that starts with a D. So let's go back, Alt F11. We're going to analyze this a little bit. So before we even allow that, we have another if. If left of, and what's the cell? It's cells target dot row comma 1. That would be the, the row we're on, comma, uh, column 1. Okay, if left of that comma, well, just the first letter, right? Not, this, not the first two letters. So if left of that, the first letter equals P, or, and I'm going to copy and paste that and just put M, copy, paste, or if that is M, then run this beautiful code, end if. Okay, now we're going to run into a snag here in a minute, and I'm going to show you what what we can do about it, okay? Let's say this is Margaret, okay? And I'm going to click here and put $4, okay? That worked. What if we had my name in there? I'll put $3. Let's watch the cell as I hit tab. Ooh, it did not work. Okay, now let's let's experiment with something else. I want you to see this. Margaret with a lowercase m. $5. Oh, you notice it didn't like that. Let's review what we actually told Excel to analyze. We said if the leftmost a uh, letter or number of this cell is capital P or capital M, then run the code. Okay, so what do we do to get over this? We want to analyze it no matter what they type, a capital or a lowercase. So you can use U case if the uppercase version of whatever this letter is is P, or if the U case if the uppercase version of whatever this is is capital M, then run it. Let's run it again. I'm going to hit 1. You notice it accepted Margaret now because it just capitalized it in its analysis. It pretended like this was a capital M by using U case. Okay? So we've completed our objectives 1 and 2. I think that will wrap that up. Thanks for watching, and next time we're going to talk about the double-click event.